You know, it's a little alarming to me that so many people are still, till this day, deceived by Tucker Carlson. Even people on the left don't acknowledge the threat that he poses, right? Because Tucker Carlson, quite frankly, is a white supremacist. Full stop. I'm not accusing him of occasionally advocating for racist things. I am saying he outright advocates for white supremacy on his television show, on national television. And, you know, I'm going to play a clip for you, and you're going to see this, and you're probably going to think, wow, he's really gone full mascot this time, and I'm inclined to say that myself. But if you know anything about Tucker Carlson, he's gone mask off multiple times before because he is a white supremacist. And the thing about Tucker Carlson is that he is a skilled propagandist. So he knows how to promote his nefarious agenda, you know, cross the line just enough to make sure that he still has this platform. But, you know, he gets the point across to people that, you know, immigrants and people of color pose a threat to white America. So in this clip that we're about to watch, he is going to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. And of course, he's going to do what all conservatives do. He's going to cherry pick a couple of examples of rioting and looting. And he's going to suggest that, you know, these examples here are representative of the totality of the movement. And, you know, it's not about him misrepresenting Black Lives Matter because that's what we expect from conservatives at this point. But what he's going to do is much more nefarious. He's going to say that what we're watching here, the clips that he shows you, this speaks to broader implications about what this movement means for the future of America. More specifically, what this means for white America and the city that you live in. Take a look. Last Thursday, meanwhile, in Portland, Oregon, a city that effectively no longer has a government, rioters threw paint on an elderly woman. What was her crime? She made the mistake of trying to stop them from destroying a building. Here's why this is so interesting. As the mob attacked her, they explained their agenda. Quote, this isn't your world anymore, they shouted. Put your mask on! Boy, does that tell you everything. Meanwhile, in the city of Chicago, rioters have dropped any pretense of ideology. Sure, they'll vote for Joe Biden, obviously, but this isn't about the election. They just want to steal things. And in effect, authorities there, as they are in so many places, are allowing them to do that. Early this morning, caravans of looters sacked stores in downtown Chicago. Here's part of it. What country is this? And what's the justification for that? There's always a story at the bottom of these things that the media repeat, allow them to believe it was justified. The pretext for that theft and destruction you just saw was a false report that a teenager had been executed by the police. It was a lie, as it turned out. It usually is a lie. In fact, a 20-year-old had been killed after shooting at the police. Whatever. We're so used to violence justified by lies that few people seem to notice the difference. And speaking of, just this weekend, Joe Biden honored Michael Brown, that was the man killed in Ferguson, Missouri, after he violently attacked a store owner on tape and then a cop. Joe Biden apparently doesn't remember that part. He seems to consider Michael Brown a martyr. It's hard to know who in America still believes these lies. Most people no longer seem to believe anything they hear from politicians. When everything is political, we learn to trust nothing. But one thing that is real and will always be real is the debris left behind. Bullet holes are real. So are burned stores. So are boarded up windows and terrified neighbors. That will always be real. And we have it. So what will be the aftermath of all of this? What are America's cities going to look like a year from now? There's no question people will flee Georgetown. They may have BLM signs in their driveways. It doesn't mean they want screaming BLM lunatics on their streets. They don't. Nobody does, actually, no matter what they tell you. No matter what color they are, no one likes that. That's true for people in Georgetown, in Portland, Oregon, in San Francisco, in Chicago, New York, any other place where order and decency have disappeared. People will not live long with chaos. No matter what they tell you, no matter what signs they put in their yard, they will leave. And many of them have already left. 
We're about to see one of the great demographic shifts in American history. Unless the insanity stops and soon, our biggest cities will revert to what they were 50 years ago. Broke, dirty, and dangerous. On the bright side, we'll have resolved the gentrification problem. So a lot of college professors will pat themselves in the back. Yikes. So he is just straight up saying the quiet part out loud. And, you know, I don't know how many people were expecting his show to improve and get less racist since the uh, racist writer was fired after he was outed as a racist. But, I mean, Tucker Carlson, he knows what he's doing. And before we even get to the substance of this clip here, I mean, isn't he in theory a bad conservative if he does, in fact, believe that, you know, uh, being a small government conservative is something that we should strive for and having a small government is preferable to you know the large government that the left and democrats advocate for because think about this if you are a small government conservative then what's the main reason why you think it's so important that we uphold and protect the second amendment so we can arm ourselves and ultimately protect ourselves from government abuse oppression and tyranny so if you're a conservative then how is it that you're against a movement of people who are responding to state-sanctioned murders against black Americans. Like, most of these protests are peaceful. But in the instances of rioting and looting, as a conservative who believes you are justified in taking up arms and doing violence against the government, if they become oppressive or too oppressive, how can you say that that's not a proportional response as a conservative? If you think that taking up arms against the tyrannical government is justified why are they not justified to riot and loot if they're getting killed if people are dying by the state because police officers are agents of the state so when they kill a citizen that is state-sanctioned violence how are you not on their side how are you against even the violent protests because as a conservative if you are consistent in your you know small government approach to governance Shouldn't you be with them? I mean, Ammon Bundy is like the only conservative who's principled on this issue, who thinks that, um, you know, uh, the government can't become too abusive. Otherwise, the citizens are justified in responding proportionately. So, you know, I don't get that. But putting that aside, I don't know what kind of conservative Tucker Carlson is. I think he'd probably say he's a small government conservative, but mostly he's, you know, a nationalist Trumpian conservative. Um, but let's look at what he says here. So at first, he plays us that clip of a police officer getting hit with something. And he says that, you know, this reaction was, you know, due to people falsely believing that a teenager was executed by the police. And he says that as if it's so preposterous for people to believe that the police would ever kill an, an unarmed black teen. But why are people marching in the first place like they're marching because it's so common that police officers murder unarmed black americans i mean look at tamir rice so i mean the fact that he is dismissing their concern which is legitimate i mean it, it kind of shows you what a hack he is but on top of that he says joe biden honored michael brown that was the man killed in ferguson missouri after he violently attacked a store owner on tape and then a cop now for him to say that is absurd to me because first of all michael brown was murdered with his hands up multiple eyewitnesses say he had his hands up and darren wilson still shot him but even if we believe the absolute worst about michael brown and you accept that he's a terrible human being why would you believe that a police officer should be allowed to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner? Why should being a bad person, being a criminal potentially, lead to a death penalty, a death sentence for you? Why is the conclusion, oh, well, I think that Mike Brown was bad, therefore his killing is justified. If you believe in justice, don't you think that the appropriate response would have been for Darren Wilson to apprehend him? And for him to have due process, not for him to be fucking killed. I just, I don't get the logic here. You know, and I've seen this with Tim Pool as well with Ahmed Arbery. You know, if you can prove based on fuzzy, you know, security cam footage that maybe that black person who was murdered was doing something bad, maybe their killing is justified. Maybe their murder isn't so bad after all. Except, no, we have this thing called due process. And if you think someone is guilty, you shouldn't be saying, oh, or implying that that just justifies their death. Of course it doesn't.
Isn't it conservatives that say they believe in law and order? Isn't it conservatives who say we should be following the law and the Constitution? But yet, you know, they imply that it's perfectly acceptable to kill unarmed black Americans if you're a police officer so long as you, uh, you know, see them doing something wrong. But here's where he goes full mask off. This is where he takes it further than other conservatives who just try to intentionally misrepresent the Black Lives Matter movement. He says, we are about to see one of the great demographic shifts in American history. Why is that a problem? A demographic shift is something that will constantly be happening throughout the course of humanity because we are a species that is constantly changing, right? So the only reason to be against the demographic shift would be if you're racist. Um, unless the insanity stops and soon our biggest cities will revert to what they were 50 years ago. So he says we're going to see one of the greatest demographic shifts in American history. And unless that stops, we will see our cities revert back to what they were a few years ago. So the explicit implication is that the more diversity we see, the more, you know, carnage we'll see, the more poverty that we'll see in these cities, the more damage to our cities that we will see. Broke, dirty, and dangerous. On the bright side, we will have resolved the gentrification problem. So a lot of college professors will pat themselves on the back. That is... The fact that he's saying this on national television is astonishing to me. He has no shame. First of all, gentrification, the reason why that's a bad thing, he probably think it's a good thing. The reason why it's a bad thing is because you are pricing people out of their own communities, black and brown people most of the time. So that's not, that's not a good thing. Because you think that they're, you know, the more development that we see, that means that society is improving. You're just pushing people into different cities. And for him to say that demographic shifts, greater diversity in America will lead to more, you know, broken, dirty, and dangerous cities. I mean, at this point, I don't know why he doesn't just come out and say explicitly, I think that immigrants and brown people make America dirtier and dangerous. Like, this is exactly what you would expect from a Klan member to say. But yet we have a Fox News host a serious newsman saying this on national television. Like, this should shock everyone. Like, everyone shouldn't just become accustomed to this. We shouldn't just think, oh, well, that's Tucker. He's a white supremacist. Like, anyone who sees this should be appalled. This is white supremacy. Because it's only, you know, um, the immigrants, demographic changes that lead to cities being, you know, uh, broke, dirty, and dangerous. I don't know what else to say. Like, what more does he need to say to convince people that he is a dangerous person, that he is a white supremacist? I mean, it's only shocking if you don't know much about Tucker Carlson. But, I mean, what he's saying here is uh, it's really persuasive to people who don't know any better. Like, a conservative who watches this and they see images of, you know, looting and rioting, that makes them fearful and then, you know, that fear makes them susceptible to believing that, you know, demographic changes will, in fact, affect them in a negative way. When in actuality, demographic changes are always going to be happening. Yeah. Disturbing. Deeply disturbing. Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist. So when I say that Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist, understand that I'm not being hyperbolic. This is what I mean. If you are explicitly saying that demographic changes, the shift from, you know, a city being non-white or being white to non-white leads to a city being broke, dirty, and dangerous, and it takes us backwards, that is outright white supremacy. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. 